and welcome to this video where I'll talk about something that I think is really a big step forward for us that use QGIS, namely that the concept of domains are now being included in QGIS, although it still is at um, an early stage in the development. But it's there and you can start using it with a bit of a tweak. Um, I first read about this um, on this website or on, on, on GitHub, and this post on GitHub, um, where there's been a, um, a request for adding a field domain management capabilities in the browser. And Neil Dawson has been working, and um, apparently, um, at the moment, have um, most of it so, so that you can cr create them and we can um, but not delete and that's also some other things that we did not work yet but it is on the way in QGIS I have um, a little demo so we have I create a little demo folder with two geo package files um, one both called domain demo but one called domains so if I take the one that is called domains and right click on it and say add a new field domain there are three types of domains um, I've not been able to make these uh, blobs work but that's probably just um, my lack of abilities into this but um, range domains so that is you can specify a minimum and maximum value. Um, so this is going to be on an integer, so I'll call it an integer domain. And I'm going to do it on an integer. And so I want the minimum allowed value to be 5 and the maximum allowed to be 15. So they're both included in the range. And I'll say OK. And I'll also make a new field domain as a coded value domain. That's going to be a text domain. And it's going to have the value of yes. And with a capital Y. And no. And with a capital N. Uh, oh, yep. So. Um, and that's fine, and I'll say OK. Probably this didn't really work quite as I hoped. Let's see. So my if I click on my text domain, it has a yes and a no. That's fine. My integer domain, uh, it says zero both. And sometimes if you press the up and down arrows, and sometimes it works, sometimes I haven't quite found out what and why but I have found out what happens and uh, how to um, tweak it so that you already now can start using this really powerful tool so I'll close QGIS and I will open dBeaver so over in uh, dBeaver hopefully we will have it there I have um, created connections to my two databases um, and what I have done is that if we look at our demo table, these two databases and look at the tables included in them, there are some differences. Um, so there is some extra elements and this is because that once you start using this tool it um, extends the schema of the database um, to be able to do this and one, one of the things it has done is that it has included this um, table called column constraints and in this one if I view the data 
and data, you can see that it has one row called I domain. It's a constraint of a range, and it says zero as a value and has a minimum of zero. And this one, one is the indication of it's true, so it's included. So if I change this to a five and change the max to a 15, like that, then my little um, database domain is happy and up and running. You can see that there are two rows for my text domain. So that's, um, that's all good. So I'll commit my changes and close uh, dbeaver and go back into... So in QGIS, what I now have to do is that I have to say which fields are going to use my new domains. So um, we have some fields up here and we have our domains down here. But what I want to do is that I want to go in and take this text one and I will set a field domain text domain on that and I'll take my integer one and set my integer domain on that. So now I have associated my domains with my fields so I can now start editing the data and it into edit mode, make some points. And if I now say that you can see that my text one has become a drop down with the values yes and no, because that was what was in the values of the domain. So yes, my this one is just a free text I can write in. This one in my integer, that's the one that has the domain on it. So if I write for there. It will set in a null because that's outside the domain. If I write seven, that will be fine because that's between five and and uh, fifteen. If I write seventeen, it rounds it down to the max that are in the range. I don't know if that's is that debatable. If that's a good way of doing it, but here I can just write seventeen and it will. Uh, it will work as we expected. So the domains is really um, is working, and that's um, really nice. So we have a point. One thing you should be aware of is that if you're going to do a filter on your, I just uh, save it. If you do a filter on this, on our uh, Enzico one. And that was on text one and say text one equal. And then here, be aware that it is the code value. So remember that I had with all, all small characters, the code, and with a capital beginning character in my value. So in the filter tool, it is. Yes, like this. But if I look in my attribute table, um, where did it go? Show attribute, open attribute table. We can see that it is above a capital. So there, you, you just have to get used to that. What we see in the interface, what we type in is the value, but what is stored in the database is a code. That's the same in most other programs that do that has this implementation. So basically, I think this is a really, really, really nice tool. Um, one little bit of still annoying thing is that if you regret and you want to delete them, nah, um, not possible. But again there, if uh, we uh, close QGIS and uh, relaunch um, the Beaver, we can go into our domain version here. And um, we can go in and uh, tables and our column constraints. 
take our list view table, I'm sorry, view data, and uh, simply delete this um, value here. Um, so delete edit and delete current row and commit the changes. So now that's gone. Um, probably there are some odds and ends that you, you know. So, I mean, I should probably have gone in before doing that and then onset the domain um, to make sure that all of these things are updated. Um, so, um, but apart from that, um, nothing apparently breaks on this. So, um, my point of view, I think this is really a big step forward. If it's production ready yet, well, um, I think it's one of these, uh, use at own risk, but I think really that this is a giant step, um, in order to do make QGIS more useful. So thank you those who are putting in the hours and implementing this. And thank you for watching this video. Bye.